along with the great Brooke, who is the Chase Center beverage director and, more importantly, mixologist extraordinaire. And you're going to make some extraordinary drinks, right? What do we got? So, Franco, we're going to start off with our Jefferson's Bourbon Warriors Punch today. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. We're going to go in with a little bit of ice in our shaker. Okay. Start off with one ounce of our Jefferson's very small batch bourbon. I love this Jefferson's bourbon right here. It's so good. One ounce of our ginger liqueur. I can smell that now, Brooke. That's just... Mm. An ounce of our lime sour. And one ounce of our pineapple juice. Okay. There we are. Gonna shake that guy all Let up. Let's party together, right? Have a good time. Warriors punch. Go Jefferson's bourbon. Mm. Drives of the game are all from Jonathan Kaminga in Dallas. Now, Kalena Early went with the human helicopter. I don't think you should get away from that. So this guy has the rotor blades going. He levitates. He can put it down in so many different ways, and we saw a ton of them against the Mavs. He gets so much air time. He spends so much time in the air. Our wing stop bringing the flavor. JK on the road trip. He's just growing up in front of us. I mean, you're just seeing everything he could do on both ends of the floor. He's really figuring it out. And you think about this Warrior offense. Coach Kerr talks about the fast decision-making, quick decision-making, 0.5 seconds to make a decision. As a rookie, that's probably the toughest thing to pick up. No other team in the NBA promotes that as much as the Warriors do. So for him to break through and be a staple in the rotation and be trusted right now and score the way he is, he's really overcome a lot here, and it's really admirable. I think you bring up a great point. 0.5 basketball when you're 20 years old. As Melton misses that three, the in and out with a beat, and here comes DiVincenzo. And you got Coach Kerr, who is kind of old school, makes the young guys earn it a little more, so you've overcome that, you figured out the offense, and you're doing work. And Steve, the things he did to you the first couple of years you were doing TV, that's not right. Clay Thompson off that guy, and then here comes Tobias Harris. Here's him open, 6 of 11, Philly 4 of 10. Tobias Harris with the runner. Tobias Harris always has, like, quiet 20-point games. He's just going to be productive, efficient, quietly. They're involving Looney a lot. He's made good decisions, but you don't want him to be just standing in the lane like he's been this whole possession. Oh. Curry missing there, and even Chenzo fouling P.J. Tucker. If you watch him be there, he never left the lane. He's like, oh, I've seen that. You're not giving the ball to Looney to shoot. He's just waiting for people. And here's Kamega coming in the game now. And Jordan Poole as well. And you're going to have to occupy him somehow. That's why they want to buy the ball. They set a screen for guys. You're going to have space to shoot. Give Kavon the ball. All right, be honest with me. How tall is Draymond, do you think? Six. Six. Okay, there he is, Draymond guarding Embiid. The best defender in the world, dealing with one of the best offensive players in the world. And they're, just, they're just not, Draymond can't get any taller as Embiid scores over him there. I told you, he's probably telling his teammates, that you need to give me the ball. I'm going to have a field day. And it's interesting, he, he's still starting around the free throw line, Elver, like we're talking about. He's been going to this, because that's what Dirk Nowitzki used to do. They give him the ball there in the middle and just kind of let him go to work. But against the small defender, you would think Draymond would like that because he'd be able to move his feet and just try to keep him out as far as possible. But Embiid is just too strong. He's missed a couple free throws, which is a rarity. Embiid's got five early, so does Clay. Draymond has picked up the dribble. Now, Kaminga on George Niang, former Santa Cruz Warrior. We're going to have to keep him being honest as Draymond missed that jumper. There's seven guys on the Philly roster that make 40% or more on threes. Niang's one of them. That's why they're the number one three-point shooting team in the league, but they haven't made one yet. Timeout. Yeah, and that time, we get the call from Chris Paul on the river. So he's saying to the 
Suns-Lakers game on ESPN on Wednesday. Subsequent to that game, Monty Williams, their head coach, went into the interview room and lambasted the officiating, talking about the dearth of calls that went against them. And subsequent to that was fine, but you know how sometimes it works. We're seeing a little bit of the residual now. They've gone to the line seven times. Well, I can say this. Nobody has attempted more free throws in this league this season than the Los Angeles Lakers. You can draw your own conclusions with that. Monty Williams trying to make a point, and he actually, before the game, asked what a collection he played out. Said, hey, I've got six kids. I need help paying off my phone. They've got GoFundMe's out there for that stuff. Here's Booker. Already on a Supermax deal. Chris Paul understands the importance of this yeah. game maybe better than anyone. Boy, T.J. Warren with a little room service on the other end. Mike Brown calls timeout. The Kings down by four. Just under three and a half minutes to go. He and Bump getting on the same page. Back after this. If you're just joining us, Damian Lillard out. Yusuf Nurkic out. Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant out as well. This here little back here. Fellows wearing WNBA Legends t shirts tonight. Gorgeous looking t shirts. And with 